all day, Lord, that you just would just, Father God, Lord, just open up our minds, God, our bodies, our souls, Father God, Lord, to things to you right now, Father. Father, we ask you right now, Father, that you would just begin to to bless us, Father God, Lord, and and, and show us, Father God, Lord, your wisdom and your understanding, Father God, Lord, unto you, Father. Father, we praise you, Father, we honor you, God. God, we give you the glory and honor, Lord Jesus, Lord. Lord, I thank you right now, Father God, Lord. I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you, Father God, Lord, that you were just, just touching the lives of your people right now, Father. In the precious name of Yeshua right now, Father. Father God, Lord, just open up doors that no man can, Father God, and shut doors that no man can, Father. In the precious name of Jesus right now, Lord. Hallelujah, Father God, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing, God, and what you're about to do, Lord. We thank you, Father God, Lord, for just giving us infinite wisdom today, Father God, Lord, giving us strategies, Father God, Lord, to come against the enemy, Father God, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray, Father God. We thank you, Father God, Lord, for just uh, sending warring angels, God, sharing, Father God, Lord, warring, Father God, Lord, hallelujah, Father God, Lord, angels, Father, on our behalf, Lord Jesus, Father God, Lord, just to... Father God, Lord, to battle on our behalf, Father God, Lord, to go forth, Father God, Lord, and destroy the enemy's plan before he even tries anything today, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Father God, Lord. And Lord, as I forget, Father God, Lord, about these holidays, Lord, I'm not really into holidays, God, but I ask you right now, Father God, Lord, for uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, God, and others, Father, that have given their life, Father God, Lord, for for the, the sake, Father God, Lord, of freedom, Lord, the freedom of speech, God, freedom of, of, of willpower, God. God, we ask you right now, Father God, Lord, we pray for every martyr, God. We pray, Father, for every martyr's family right now, Father God, Lord. We ask you right now, Lord, for those missionaries right now, Heavenly Father, Lord. Those missionaries right now, Heavenly Father, Lord, that that, that are believing, that are putting their lives down right now, Lord. Especially those in Iraq, God, in Afghanistan, God. God, those, Father God, that are, that are, that are Father God, are putting their lives on the line right now, Father God, Lord, for your gospel's sake, Father. We pray for their family members right now, Lord, and we pray, Father, that you would strengthen them right now, Lord, in the precious name of Yeshua, Father God, Lord. Father God, Lord, that you would gain a kingly anointing, God, Father God, Lord, to come against the prince and malady of darkness right now, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for opening us up in prayer. Good You're morning, welcome. intercessors. Amen. I am um, extremely excited because Today, God has just been really speaking to me about different things. And the more he revealed himself, the more I'm, I'm getting a clear picture of how God is really wanting us to be. And so I, I'm excited because this week we're, yes, we're studying about Christ being a great physician, the physician, amen. And in learning about this, We understand that he was the greatest of all the physicians. He performed more healings than any other kind of miracle. Nothing stopped him in his ministry, not blindness, craziness, lameness, deafness, or even death. And every ailment yielded to his undeniable power. And every healing served as evidence that his kingdom was breaking into a fallen world. Not just any fallen world, but our fallen world. So when you pray for healing, for yourself or for others, remember that God never sends sickness, though he sometimes allows us to become sick. Indeed, Scripture sees sickness and death as byproducts of sin. And it, it was to solve the sin problem that Jesus actually came into the world, right? So when we pray for healing, remember that Jesus is always our ally, always. He's always wanting what is best for each and every one of us, for all of us. That includes you, me, and every single person that you care about or know. And so with that being said and that being true, our focus scriptures this week is going to come out of Matthew 11, verse 5, and it says, The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who 
that leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. And then Luke 4 and 23 says, Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. So those are our two focus scriptures, Matthew 11 and 5 and Luke 4 and 23 for this week. And so I'm going to read a little bit more of Matthew. Matthew 11, verse, starting at verse 2. So when John heard in prison that Jesus, what Jesus was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one? Who was to come? Or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, go back and report to John what you hear and see. As the blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Amen? You see, Jesus went to Nazareth and we were familiar with this, right? And this is where he had been brought up, where he was raised. And on the seventh day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. And he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recover your sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did at Capernaum. I tell you the truth, he continued. No prophet is accepted in his own hometown, Luke 4, 16 through 24. Amen? Now, how many of us who we know have the office of a prophet as a mantle or the gift of prophecy as a gift have been confused about why we're not accepted in our hometown? Now, that's one of those questions that would have to be answered in a personal training so that you can have clarity on your level, clarity for your call. Amen? But it's true, and it's written in Scripture. Christ confirmed it. And so if that's your situation, your circumstance, if that's what you're going through, please reach out to Pastor Trey and myself. Amen? I'm going to lay down some background information so that you can have clarity. So we know that the ancient Egyptians, they were, so to speak, among the first to practice medicine, learning how to fill teeth, how to stitch up wounds, how to set broken bones, and perform various kinds of surgery. Later on, the Greeks developed a more empirical approach to medicine. While the Romans grew wealthy by developing specialties that focused on treating eyes, ears, teeth, and various gynecological disorders. So though the Jews used physicians, they believe healing came ultimately from God. He was and still is Yahweh Rophi, or Yahweh Rapha, the Lord who heals. What's more, their divine healer had given them a set of laws that included hygienic practices that contributed to their health and to their staying power as a people. Also, according to the Talmud, and we know the Talmud is an authoritative collection of Jewish writings, right? Every city had its own doctor who was licensed by city officials. 
The temple in Jerusalem also had its own physician, assigned to take care of the priest. Jesus' healing miracles clearly revealed him as the greatest of all physicians, though. And so while he emphasized the importance of faith in the healing process, the gospel do not support the teaching that a lack of healing always indicates a lack of faith. And though the New Testament sometimes directly links individual sin with sickness, it does not presume that every sickness is caused by individual sin. Rather, some is caused simply by human beings living in a fallen world. And so the result of this fallen world can be sickness and disease. But it's still interesting to note that the author of Luke's Gospel which recounts many, many of Jesus' healing miracles. He himself was a physician. Colossians 4 and 14 will support that. Amen. And so as we're continuing on, and I'm praying, I was meditating on this, and God was speaking to me this morning. He started talking to me about, you know, how there are situations and things that come up in our lives. And when we're faced with them, we don't always feel saved. You know, when certain things happen, when our response is a certain way, because how I many of know life is only 10% of what happens to you, but 90% of how you respond? How is your response to what's happening to you, around you? Even what's going on inside of you. What's your response? And then the Lord took me over to Second Timothy, chapter one, verse twelve says, "I know whom I believed, and I'm convinced that He is able to guard what I have entrusted to Him for that day." Amen. So now, I'm going to say that this young lady, her name was Anna. So Anna grew up in a church, and it wasn't a church that used the word salvation or saved very often. And there was never a decision moment that she could ever recall, you know, like giving her life to Jesus or giving her life to Christ as she has heard her more evangelical friends will kind of recount their stories or their testimonies. There is no um, born-again experience that she could recall. But she did love Jesus. She loved him for as long as she could remember. But she was not sure if she was actually saved. Now there's someone named Tom. And he remembers walking down the red carpeted aisle of his church when he was about 12 years old. He filled out the membership card and signed up for the next baptism service and attended the catechism classes for new believers. And he remembered the feeling when he knew he was a sinner who needed a Savior. And he wanted to follow Jesus more than anything. And wouldn't you know it, several years later, Tom packed his bags to go to college, entered a world of liberal teaching, wild sorority parties, and free-flowing alcohol. One night at a, junk, a drunken confession, he gave away his most valued treasure to someone he barely knew. In five minutes or less, his virginity vanished. And he wondered, how have I gotten so far away from God? He even cried out, I thought I was saved, but I guess I'm not. Then there's a young lady by the name of Sarah. 
She'd been attending neighborhood Bible studies for two years. And most of the women there had no idea that she wasn't a Christian. She put on a happy face, do her homework for the class, and use the right lingo, she explained. I'm really hungry to know God, and I've asked Jesus to come into my heart dozens of times, but I just don't feel saved yet. Why can't I get saved? Can you see how one of these people has believed the lie that they have to earn their way to heaven? And then earn their right to keep it. Why? Because they're depending on their feelings rather than the truth? The Apostle Paul wrote, to the church at Ephesus. And you also are included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance unto the redemption of those who are God's possession, the praise of his glory. Ephesians 1, verse 13 and 14. So having believed, you were saved, totally accepted, past tense, mind you, all of those words, finished, complete. So in Ephesians chapter 6, Paul tells us to put on the full armor of God. The very first piece of the armor is the helmet of salvation. We've got to know that we have moved from rejection to acceptance. From guilty to to forgiven. From condemned to saved. You see, if Satan can cause us to doubt our salvation, he gains a strong foothold into our conquered territory. Once you are saved, he can't do anything about the reality of your salvation. You are signed, sealed, and delivered. You are God, signed by God with the blood of Christ, sealed by the Holy Spirit for all eternity, and delivered from the domain of darkness and transferred to the kingdom of Christ. Amen, period, point blank. So what does Paul mean when he tells us in Ephesians to put on the helmet of salvation? A helmet is designed to protect the soldier's head, right? So the helmet of salvation is designed to protect the Christian soldier's mind. In order to have victory in spiritual battles, that the ones that we face every single day, we must make sure that the helmet of salvation is seated securely on our minds and strapped snugly in place. Once we accept Jesus as our Savior, Satan can't do anything about our position in Christ. However, he can do much to try and confuse us or cause us to doubt our salvation. Remember, he is the father of lies. It's what he does. It's who he is. There may be days when you don't feel safe. Well, I can tell you this. Your feelings have been trained by the world. Your emotions were trained by the world. This sin-sick, fallen, rejected Christ's world. And so because of that, you cannot trust or depend on your feelings or your emotions. That's why you have to sometimes speak to yourself. Encourage yourself. Sometimes when I don't feel like getting up, I have to say, get up, Chantel. You have an assignment from God. Sometimes I don't feel like praising God when the situation looks bleak, when I'm racking with pain in my body, when my mind is consumed by the attacks. Praise, Chantel. 
sing praises. Pray, press, get past yourself. And I encourage you all to do the same. You know, the old people say, well, rain on your feelings. They are not the truth. Plain and simple. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, Acts 16 and 31. Do you believe? Then you're saved. You may not feel like you're saved, but you can know that you are saved. Timothy wrote, I know whom I believe and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. Timothy had the chin strap of the helmet of salvation strapped snugly in place, and he knew he was saved no matter what he felt, no matter what the enemy have to place in his mind as a thought. All the thoughts that enter your mind are not your own. So we have to tear down the ones that are not. Tear down the strongholds. Remember we said strongholds build up walls around us and around the enemy so that we can't see him for who he truly is. That's what faith is all about. Believing God regardless of or in spite of our feelings. Amen. So where's your helmet today? Is it strapped firmly in place? If you know that you know, that you know, that you're going to heaven when you leave this earth, then you need to walk around and conduct your life as if you know. Walk with confidence. Hold your head up with confidence. Praise God with confidence. Confront the enemy with confidence, knowing that he is only trying to convince you of lies. Okay, so here's your test. Say you messed up. You really messed up. And the devil tries to tell you, how can you say that you're a Christian or call yourself a Christian? You must not be a Christian after all. What are you going to tell him? What are you going to say in response to that? If you hadn't figured it out, it's the open book test. But think about what would you say to the enemy? Do you know how to respond when he starts trying to feed you why? We tell you all always, when the enemy tries to come in like a flood, when he tries to fill your heart and your mind, your soul with lies, his version of the truth, which is still a lie, reject it, rebuke it, send it back to the sender. You don't have to receive any lie that does not line up with the word of God. You don't have to believe anything that does not line up with the promises, the will, the way, and the word of God. But that means you have to first know them, know the promises, know the will of God, know the ways of God, know its character. And when you know that you know that you know, you don't accept anything less. Amen? Let me close us out in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, today. We thank you, Father, for joining us here today. We thank you, Lord God, for reminding us of your word. And the Lord God reaffirms that we are saved through Christ Jesus. That because we believe, we are saved. So dear Lord, once again, we thank you for saving us. Sometimes we may not feel like it. 
and we may have different thoughts or processes or things that have happened to us that were going on before we said yes to you. But we believe by faith, regardless of how we feel, we stand firm in knowledge of our salvation, our eternal inheritance, and our identity as a child of God. No one can tell us that we're not your children because we know, we believe, and we will not waver. Jesus, we thank you, for you are the great physician, able to heal both the body and the soul. So we praise you because no disease is beyond your healing power, and no sin is beyond your saving grace. So today we pray that you would heal each and every one of us and make us whole and help us to live in a way that expresses our faith in you. Use us, Lord to advance your healing work so that many others will learn of your compassion and your power. Your redemption power and your salvation power that you've given to each of us who believe. Strengthen us. Open our eyes that we may see those who are in need of a healing touch from you. As intercessors laid upon our hearts, Lord God, to pray for those who are sick and afflicted in their bodies, their hearts, their minds, and their souls. Give us a burden, Lord God, to pray for, stand in the gap for, and tarry for those who are in need. We are healing to be made manifest in their lives. And we'll be sure to give you all the honor, all of the glory, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Are there any questions, comments, thoughts? Did this bless you? Did God speak to you? Did he minister to you? This is our time, intercessors. Anyone?